Hi and welcome to episode 9. So today we're looking at how we can make our game responsive. If you have no idea what that means, then this is probably the right video for you. Enjoy! Hi, I'm Chris Gilpin and you probably are wondering what responsive means. If you do already, then good, but I can show you how to do it, but if you don't, I'll explain now. Basically, if you think about websites, when you use a website on your computer, it looks different to how it looks on your phone. So, we have to think about all the different devices that we're going to use, so iPad or your iPhone or whatever, and you want to make sure that your game fills the screen. Okay, if you've got a big screen, make sure it fills it. If you've got a very small screen, make sure it fills it. So that when you're on the small screen, you're not trying to look at a very big website or very big computer game that you can barely see, that the game sort of realizes you're on a small device and reacts to it. That's what we mean by responsive. It's uh, coined really by internet websites, but we need to consider it in when we make computer games and applications. So how do we make something responsive? That is the point of today. There is an easy way and there's a hard way. Guess which way is better? Well, of course the hard way. The hard way wouldn't exist unless it was better. But I'm going to show you both ways and show you why the easy way is not as good as the more difficult way. So let's get started. So this is our game here. If I click run straight away, then you can see a few things wrong. Uh, if we try and expand it, kind of looks a bit rubbish with all the white around it. That's not ideal. Um, and we've got these menu items which ultimately we want probably a menu in our game so we can sort the menu out pretty quickly. So let's close that down. Now I'm going to click on application, okay, which is this one here. Yours might be up here. Okay, I've switched these around the other way because I like it better that way. And what I'm going to do is just go to where it says, so go to, which one's this one? Uh, whatever this is, window at the top here and yours is probably down here and I'm going to deselect the menu bar because I don't want the menu bar uh, if I want the menu items I'll uh, write them myself into the game now this is the easy way just click that all sorted so let's run the application now and as you can see beautiful now you might say well, that's a bit of a cheat. You're just making the game bigger. Yes, and this is why it's the easy way. It just makes everything bigger. The problem with that is, first of all, do we want the game to be that big? Do we want the tiles to be that big on a really big monitor? Probably not. Secondly, if you make it wider, it just stretches it out wider. So if you look, it's a little bit distorted now. My tiles are sort of more stretched that way. The third problem, which we can solve a little bit, is you get quite pixelated, okay? especially if your game's quite small and we stretch it a lot. So we can deal with that through something called anti-aliasing. And anti-aliasing is just this box here, anti-alias when resizing. So if I click run again, do the same thing. Well, you can see it looks a little bit better. And anti-aliasing means that when you make the, the game grow, instead of it just making the pixels grow it sort of tries to guess some nice colors and shades between the pixels so that you don't just get big blocks of pixel which is where we get the term pixelated something that's grown looks pixelated you can see the pixels so anti-aliasing sorts it out and makes the pixels less visible okay but it still looks rubbish okay and that's why we don't want to be doing that method so let's close that down method we do want to do involves an uh, object, just like the array, that it's an invisible object. So if I double click and I type in window, and it should be window control. Now this object here is incredibly powerful, very, very cool object. Okay, It allows us to control the window completely. I find it incredibly useful and I think it's in pretty much every game application I've ever made. So let's click on event editor. Now we want to create a new group of events, so insert group of events. I want to kind of put it at the top. And I'm just going to name it responsiveness, probably spelled wrongly. Oh, no, I think it is, right? And what I want to do is create a condition here. And I'm just going to compare two general values. Now, what I want to do is compare the, oh, compare the current frame width. 
So the current width of the frame, okay, that's the window that you play the game in. And if it's different to the frame window width, do I want to compare this? No, I don't. I'm an idiot. If it's different to the horizontal size of the client area. Now, the difference between these two is this one includes all the um, side bits, the menu at the top, the scroll bars. This one doesn't. This is just the game window. So if that's different to that, or you also want one if the window X or window Y size, if I get rid of the X, it's different to the client height. And you can change these by just typing instead of having to dig through it again. Okay, if that's different, I want to, what do I want to do? Frame window and I want to set the width of the frame window. So if someone's made the window bigger, I want to set the frame to that size of the client area. Okay, and I want to adjust the frame size. And I'm going to do the same to the height. So um, frame window, set height, and this time application window, vertical size of the client area. Okay, there's one more thing I need to do. I'm going to click on here again, and I'm just going to say that as a default, the user's always in the middle, and I don't want that. So do not send frame area, do not center frame area and window. Otherwise, I don't think this will work. So, moment of truth. Let's click run. Let's see if it works. Okay, so if I scroll it now. Oh, I've still got that thing clicked. Don't want that. Let's get rid of those ones. Okay, let's run it again. And there we go. Works perfectly. Almost. And you might have noticed something which actually isn't great. When I stretch it, it it's not doing anything. It's only when I release it does it actually do what I want it to. And there's one more checkbox to click before we complete this. And it is, I think on the next one, run whilst resizing. That is a gotcha that has got me quite a lot. So you just need to go, you have to be, click on application, then click on this one. So is it, is it, what's it called? Run, uh, runtime options. And we're going to click run whilst resizing. And let's have a look. And so it should work nice and smoothly now. There we go. If I make it, if you imagine, if I make it on a mobile device, the mobile device is going to look like this. It still works just as well. So, thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, please click like. If you want to see more, please click subscribe. Thank you very much.